This is a very rare and unique Jeep. And as you can see, it has a military connection. It's commonly referred to as JU-1. We're about to take it down to a military Jeep event in Clarencetown, New South Wales. And on the way, I'm gonna tell you how JU-1 came about and its connection to the military. So we'll get it packed, checked over, and get on our way. had a great day's travel. Jeeps went really well. We're about 30 k's from our destination tomorrow for the uh, military vehicle meet, but it's booked out in that little town. So we've got a campsite here in the bush and we're going to stay here tonight. Got a bit of rain happening. So we've set up a bit of a camp. Come and have a look. Up and ready but it's going to keep us dry we'll uh, cook under there first and then we'll clear the uh, tables out of the road put our stretchers out and be nice and dry for tonight where did it all begin I'm going to read an extract for you out of Jeep Action magazine and that'll explain where it all started Project Prenti was the Australian Army's procurement process to select a new range of field vehicles to replace its ageing fleet of Land Rovers and Toyota Land Cruisers. The process, process spanned a 10 year period between conception in 1981 and a final delivery of approximately 3,700 vehicles by the early 1990s. The delivery of the vehicles was expected to start in 1986. Jeep Australia decided to throw their hand in the ring and supply the J10 for the Project Prenti trials. The J10 was being sold in the Australian market at that time. So Jeep selected three straight off the assembly line and built them to this configuration. The Army trials actually called for a diesel manual transmission vehicle for the trials. We're not sure why, but Jeep supplied them a petrol automatic version. So three were built and they competed against the Land Rover and a Mercedes Benz. Each supplier had three vehicles. The door, a number of the vehicles. So JU was Jeep Unit 1, and it was Jeep Unit 2, Jeep Unit 3. And the same went with the Land Rover and the Mercedes. So three Jeeps were supplied, one, two, and three. When the project first started, there was a spare wheel and a jerry can mounted on the back on a swing out carrier. That was replaced through the trials. Things were actually updated as the trials went on, things weren't working. And I'd say all manufacturers did this. So at some stage, the spare wheel was taken from here and put underneath, there it is there. And the jerry can was placed on the side and cut into the side of the Ute back, you can see it there. So we do have photos of it in the early days of trials where the jerry can's not there and it's mounted on the back. Now the reason this was moved, I've heard two versions from guys who worked at Jeep Australia. One was that it was too slow in the trials for troops to get in and out of quickly. And the other version I've heard was it didn't actually stand up to the rough trials and was breaking and coming off and just wasn't successful on there so two versions you can go with uh, whichever one you want still quite standard in here for a j10 they didn't change a lot it kept the uh, dash pad automatic transmission and they put in a map light of course uh, trailer brakes and a couple of auxiliary fuel uh, switches here and things like that so pretty well Kept this standard in here. In behind uh, the, the stuff here you can't see at the moment, there was uh, a rifle holder here for two SLR rifles. And then in behind here was the jack 
and handles for spare changing. So quite a lot done here to, to make this roof high enough. You know, one unique uh, barring and roll bar, hood bows and canopy. Uh, lots of photos in the trials of this removed and the windscreen folded down for different applications and different rolls. Uh, a standard 258 six cylinder AMC engine. As we said before, that was kept in there for the trials. There was uh, a generator sitting on top of here. We've still got the plate. Um, I think we've got the generator somewhere, but have never mounted it. In the photos, we saw that they had a waterproofed distributor cap and leads. So there's a little bit of difference there. But other than that, it's pretty well the way it was in the trials. The three JUs did survive the trials. That's another story. And we're going to tell you that a bit later on. But at the moment, Jamie's got my dinner ready over there. So I'm going to go and enjoy that. So we will continue this later. What is on the menu tonight, Jamie? Oh, a nice beef stew. Nice beef stew. Yeah, casserole. Let's have a look in there. Pretty nice. Is it ready to go? Ready to rock and roll. Cup of tea after that? Absolutely. Nice. Sounds good. No rain through the night. Good sleep in our stretches. John and his swag. We'll pack up <laughs> and have a cup of tea and hit the road. had a great couple of days here at the military vehicle get together at Clarence Town. We've done a separate video on the event so you can check that out. Some really great military vehicles being present over the weekend so really worth a look at it. In the meantime we're going to head off on the way home we're going to continue our story on JU1 and fill you in on the rest of the story. On... After the army contract all the vehicles were going to be auctioned off. But there was a clause with Jeep Australia to say that they could buy their Jeeps back. So they did. The three JUs returned to the Jeep Australia plant in Brisbane and were used around the factory. They were then sold off. JU3 went to an owner or a new owner in Sydney and JU2 was purchased by Jeep Australia employee Linda Walshaw. He converted back to civilian look with the hard top and he still owns it today. JU1 here was bought by another Jeep Australia employee and he owned it for a little while, then he on sold it to a new owner who took it into Northern New South Wales. We mentioned all this in our article in Jeep Action Magazine in 2006. And at that stage, no one knew the exact location or had seen JU1 around. So the story continues. In 2015, I received a phone call from Vern Keyes, one of our Jeep Action subscribers. He was at a clearing sale in northern New South Wales and he was standing in front of JU1. The owner had purchased JU1 from the Jeep Australia employee and had been using it on properties that he owned since the early 90s. He had fitted it with a tray back and a hard top for more practical use. So it was 
very appreciative of the phone call from Vern. We made contact with the owner, purchased JU, and then Vern very kindly got it back to his place and kept it secure there for us till we could come and pick it up. It was good to get JU1 home and see what we purchased. And we we're really happy with what we saw. The original owner, other than fitting the tray back and fitting the hard top, had left the Jeep standard really for the trials. Now we still had the front bar, winch, blackout light was still on there. And the really good thing was sitting in the tray was the original tub from the trials. And in the tub was the seats and the hood bows and the original canvas top. That made the restoration so much easier, having all the bits and pieces. All in all, JU1 was in really good condition. Had to sort out a little bit of rust in the body and a few repairs to the tub. Some paint, tub back on and mechanical check over. We've got the new top, canvas made by Chris Goodrich. Chris is great at canvas work. He's also a Jeep enthusiast, so he made sure we had a really good job. He had the old top to use as a pattern, so it's exactly the way it was in the trials. And the restoration um, went really well. So it's been done for a couple of years now. Taken to different Jeep events around the place. And um, just try and keep the story alive. JU1 is really nice to drive. First you've got the standard J10 suspension and got the standard rims and tyres so it makes it really nice to drive on the road. It's pretty noisy in the soft top, that's typical of a soft top, a bit of flapping and carrying on. The Torque Flight 727 automatic transmission sucks the power out of the 258 petrol six cylinder but um, it's bearable you can feel it in the hills but, um, no it's really nice to drive and I think that's what needs to happen they need to be out to be driven get used get them off to Jeep events so I'm just going to enjoy which is about to hit the uh, freeway so I'm just going to Enjoy a bit of a drive. That's the story on JU1, its involvement in Project Pretty in the Army Trials. Then it was sold off, used on a property for 25 years, and then found by a Jeep enthusiast at an auction, and Jeep Action purchased it, restored it, and now being used. It's a great story, really big part of Jeep history here in Australia, and a story worth telling. So I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you later.